I wanted to be them, okay? Like, this is when, probably when I was going through my identity crisis, when I wanted to be a white girl with long blonde hair and lighter skin. This is when I was going through my identity crisis, but I wanted to be them, okay? I, like I said, I, I pay my respect when it's due. I know white privilege is to blame, but I'm sorry. They were those girls. It, it just, I just have like this big dark cloud of sadness over me now. It's so tragic. Like, oh my God, nobody deserves that. They were like the Olsen twins, but British, if that makes sense. And I'm Becky Rosso, and we're from the Sweet Life of Zach and Cody, and she's from the Sweet Life on Deck. <laughs> and, um... Hey, I was Harry Anna, and I'm back with another video. Welcome to the Pirate Ship, Harry Hook's Pirate Ship. Remember, open your ears, okay? I want you to hear this clearly. I am the captain. You are not my first mate. If you are new here, hello, my name is Harriana, and I like to make content based on nostalgia and family and children's entertainment and all the little issues that I find within that, including racism. We talk about racism a lot on this channel. Today's episode's not really going to be about racism, but let's just get into it. You know, before we get into the video in today's episode of Disney Simber, we got to do the commercials. We have to do the commercials. Do 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 commercial break. First commercial, I am on Twitter. I'm on Twitter. Yeah, uh, a lot of you guys have been asking if I had a Twitter and I did not, but now I finally do and I made one as a way to where I can connect better with you guys. So my Twitter is across the screen. Please go follow me on Twitter. Yay. Next announcement we have is Patreon. Please go support me on Patreon. When you guys support me on Patreon, it's like you guys are giving me a little tip for my work that I do and I truly, truly do appreciate it. Being a blogger is fun. I love what I do. But it's exhausting. So just a little tip, which is be nice. Thank you. I try to make the tiers as cheap as I can. Also, if you're on my Patreon, you get access to my Discord server. We have a lot of fun over there. You get exclusive behind the scenes content of a web series that I am working on. You also get behind the scenes videos and lots of other little prizes and things like that that are going to come along the way. So yeah, just, just be on the lookout for that. And last but not least, please support the Progenies. I will have the Instagram and our Indiegogo campaign linked down below. The Progenies is a Descendants fan series that I and a few others are creating because Descendants has issues, especially with its diversity. And we just want to give these characters better tales. So, yes, please go support the Progenies. I have really, really high hopes for this show. Any little bit counts. So, yes, thank you and... On to today's episode of Disney Simber. Um, Disney Simber is basically, um, I stole this idea from Nostalgia Critic, and my version of Disney Simber is different, where he just does reviews and I just talk about everything that has to do with Disney. And y'all know my little style of commentary, my little style of commentary. Harriana does Disney Simber her way, her way or the highway. I was gonna wear my white hat today. But for the sake of what this video is about, it makes sense to keep it pink. It makes sense to keep it pink. So today's episode of Disney Simber has to do with more Sweet Life of Zack and Cody content. There are so much about this show and franchise that I can speak about. And here's another one today. I got this idea from one of my mutuals on Instagram named Baby Angel, who is so, so great. You should really go follow them. So I will post her instagram post right here and you guys will just look so i went through the comments and everybody was just wondering what happened to them and i knew what happened to them but it just hit me that so many people really had no idea what happened to them so I did tell a few people in the comment section about what did happen to them. And then it just like it really just like hit me that so many people just thought they like fell off the face of the earth and that was not the case. So today I am here to talk to you guys about what happened to the Rosso twins and their family. It's actually very, very sad. I found out about this information years ago when this event happened and me revisiting it over these past few days I was putting this video together. 
it, it just I just have like this big cl dark cloud of sadness over me now it's so tragic like oh my god nobody deserves that so I asked you guys on my Instagram story if you guys would like for me to make a video about them and everybody said yes and then the other half of the people were asking who were they and then once I told people who they were they were like oh yeah what did happen to them so here what happened to the Rosso twins it's tragic People mo mainly know the Rosso twins as those two British twin girls from the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. And I know a lot of people don't be knowing about what the freak I be talking about on my channel. So I got to get background about what the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody was. The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody was a television show that aired on Disney Channel about the lives of the people that lived and worked in the Tipton Hotel. It was a very, very luxury hotel. It's a parody of the Hilton Hotel. And the show focused on these two twin boys named Zach and Cody. And throughout the series, Zach and Cody were introduced different love interests from time to time. And these two girls right here were their love interests for a while. I think they were their longest love interests at the moment. Sorry, y'all. I hear my sister yelling about something. Is she okay? She's okay. Oh, um, anyway. But yeah, they were their love interests for a minute. Like, they were there for a while. Their names were Jessica and Janice on the show. Played by Camilla and Rebecca Rosso, also known as Millie and Becky Rosso. They were born on July 6, 1994 and are currently 26 years old. The Rosso twins are a great example of people in Hollywood that just got lucky. They just got lucky, okay? They went to a live taping of The Sea Life of Zack and Cody. Um, the executive producer noticed that they were twin british twin girls and was like okay um would you guys like to be on the show and the rosso twins actually were into acting they've been taking acting classes for a while and they always like to sing and dance and whatnot so they were like yeah we would love to audition um they auditioned and they got the part of jessica and janice the twin girls on the sea level second cody i will go there I will go there. Y'all know what we do on the pirate ship. If I notice something, I have to call it out. I love these girls. I have nothing bad to say about them. But white privilege. White privilege. White privilege. The Rosso twins are a great example of white privilege. Because I bet you if they were twin girls of color, they probably would not have gotten picked. Out of the audience. Out of the audience. I bet you that there were numerous other twins that came to the live tapings of this. We have Zach and Cody. And they were probably of color. Yeah, and also pretty privileges to blame too because they weren't, you know, your typical pretty blonde girls. So, you, you, I'm sorry, but you have to take things in like this in consideration, especially how I know how their industry works. White privileges to blame. Them getting the role on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody did a lot for them. Like, people were just obsessed with these twin British girls. And I'm part to blame too. I was obsessed with them, I'm not gonna lie. They were like instantly it girls. Like, you know how we have people nowadays like Ellie Thillman or Maddie Ziegler or Emma Chamberlain. I wouldn't really throw Maddie Ziegler in there because Maddie Ziegler has talent. But you know all of those girls, the Ellie Thillmans, the um, Hello Hannah Malochis, the Haley Sonnies, the Charlie D'Amelios. They were basically those kind of girls. They were those kind of girls, okay? It girls just for being cute, okay? It girls just for being cute. People didn't really care about if they could act or not. They just saw two twin blonde British girls that happened to be pretty and they just went nuts. They went nuts. Remember, this is like the early 2000s. Not really early 2000s, but the mid 2000s. So those like the skinny, pretty, white, blonde girl was like the it girl at the time that everybody wanted to be. And those were the girls that got everything. They had everything from being on a hit TV show to getting their own dolls on Star Doll. Back in the 2000s, if you got a doll on Star Doll, you were that girl. Hi everyone, I'm Millie and I'm Becky and we just want to say hi to everyone on Star Doll. You may know us as Jessica and Janice on Disney Channel's The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Here you can go to our suite which we had loads of fun decorating and we made it really bright and colourful. And here you can dress us up in some of our own clothes and clothes we went shopping for in the Star Plaza. 
Okay, this is our first room. You were that girl. You were that person. And they were those girls, okay? They were those girls. Like I said, I, I pay my respect when it's due. I know white privilege is to blame, but I'm sorry. They were those girls. They were so well liked by Hollywood that they ended up getting their own movie called Legally Blondes. And Legally Blondes is basically a spinoff type sequel of Legally Blonde, the Reese Witherspoon movie, where they play Reese Witherspoon's character, Elle Woods' cousins. I know, I don't care what nobody else say, that movie slaps, okay? That movie slaps. If y'all want me to review Legally Blondes one day on my channel, I will. But I don't care. That movie slaps. I don't care. Say what y'all want. I am a sucker for 2000s teen movies, okay? I watch them all. All the PG and the PG-13 ones. I don't care about them nasty R-rated ones. I am a sucker for these kind of movies, okay? Like I said how they were those girls. I wanted to be them, okay? Like, this is when, probably when I was going through my identity crisis, when I wanted to be a white girl with long blonde hair and lighter skin. This is when I was going through my identity crisis, but I wanted to be them, okay? I will, I understand. I've changed now. I have grown to love the skin that I am in, but, like, I wanted to be them. I wanted to be them. I wanted to look like them. I wanted to have everything they have, and I'm not going to lie. I was jealous of these girls. I was very jealous of them. The girls wanted to focus more on their music career, so that's exactly what they did after they did Legally Blondes. They made a few appearances on The Sweet Life on Deck. I think they only made one appearance on The Sweet Life on Deck. And then next thing you know, they just stopped acting for a minute. I don't know if act they always wanted to just stop acting in general, but that was the last time they were on television and they wanted to move forward with making music because that's what they were more into at the moment. They started a group with their two younger sisters called the Rosso sisters. Their sisters' names were Lola and Georgina. So it was Millie, Becky, Lola, and Georgina, the Rosso sisters. They were signed to Capitol Records under Nick Jonas's name. So yeah, you know, them being on the school after Zach and Cody did so much for them because people, like I said, everybody was just obsessed with them being twin blonde british girls like they literally just kind of had everything like spoon fed to them by this industry just because of their appearance they were like the olsen twins but british if that makes sense and they also got to tour with demi lovato during her neon lights era they were like a pretty big deal i think more overseas than they were in america i'm gonna be honest with y'all that music was not for me it was really like cutesy poppy like the stuff you hear on disney channel and whatnot it was it was like you can tell it was targeted towards a preteen audience. It, it just wasn't my type of music. I'm not here to sit here and talk bad about these girls' music. It was bad music, but it it's like you can tell they were like targeting it to a, a younger audience. So I, I get where they were coming from on that aspect with their music. Like I I don't blame you. That it's easy to get a big audience from those those people. Why do y'all think so many of these stupid YouTubers, their big audiences are kids, okay? Like that's like a great way to make money. I don't blame them. Now here's where it gets tragic. I hate this. I hate this so much. As they were getting more and more into making music and getting ready to release their first album and whatnot, their mother was becoming more and more sick. As time was going on, instead of them just posting about music and their lives and just having fun and whatever, more of their posts became more and more about their mother and how she just wasn't doing well. It's, it's actually, it's so sad. Oh my gosh. And... I am about to read to you guys their final Instagram post, okay? This is the last that anyone has seen of the Rosso twins and sisters ever on the internet, at least. Like, I'm pretty sure they're still alive. I'm not acting like they're dead or anything. But this is the last that people have seen on the internet of them. And basically, if you are not on the internet, you're kind of like a non-existing anymore. So I am going to read to you guys word for word what exactly they posted. We are incredibly heartbroken and devastated that our beautiful mother, Athena, passed away after fighting an extremely tough battle with pancreatic cancer. She was our best friend and inspiration and the most caring, loving, selfless, kind-hearted person we could ever imagine. After much thought and consideration, we have decided not to carry on with our girl group and making music and to close this chapter in our lives, even though it was the beginning and we hadn't released music in the U.S. yet. 
We are so sorry to anyone we're disappointing, but during these extremely difficult past few months, our hopes and dreams for the future have changed. We'll never forget the amazing memories we made as a music group while it lasted. We're so happy and we had the chance to meet and talk to such genuinely sweet and supportive fans like you guys. Thank you so much for all you have written us nice messages, sent us well wishes, prayed for us or our mom, or supported us in some way. We are so grateful. Love you. And then they put a heart emoji after that. That, oh my gosh, that, I found this when they posted it, okay? Back in 2015 when they disbanded and just like faded away from the limelight. That hurt it. And they had a picture of their beautiful mother up and everything. And it was just so tragic. Like, I was so hurt. I was so freaking hurt after I read that. And just reading it again just, like, broke my heart. And I know people try to say that, why would you let that stop you from your career? That should give you motivation. No, I completely understand why they are coming from. And I don't blame them for wanting to not want to do it anymore. Their mother had been battling cancer, and as their mother was kind of like their biggest cheerleader, now that she wasn't there anymore, they just kind of just didn't want to do it anymore. It's completely valid. Like, when I tell y'all when I started having a lot of issues with my PMDD and anxiety, I lost my passion to dance. Like, a lot of people know that I used to post dance videos all the time in here, and I was training and trying to do better about wanting to be a professional dancer and a choreographer and whatnot. But as my mental health was just falling apart, I was really, I just faded away from it and I just didn't want to do it anymore. Ever since my anxiety got the best of me, I have not danced since. And it's, it's really sad. I miss dancing, but at this point in my life, I actually kind of hate it. I don't really have much desire to dance anymore because I'm just not in the right state of mind to do so. And because of their mother's passing, they never released that album that they were talking about. Yeah, like, I was watching a few of their YouTube videos the other day, and they were talking about, like, they were so happy about making music. Like, who cared if it was bad or not? They were just doing what they loved. And seeing people so happy about doing what they love, it makes me happy. And to see that they were dealing with this on the other side that we didn't see it just makes it more and more tragic in my opinion like their mother was the one that was helping them the entire time while they were on the sweet life of zach and cody she was like i said their biggest fan their biggest supporter i really do hope this family has found some peace with the situation that they were placed in it is always tragic to lose somebody that you love or just lose your desire for anything it's just really really tragic i don't wish any bad on this family whatsoever they were very unproblematic they never did anything wrong like yeah they made bad music for the most part but like y'all don't bully them over that i've seen people bullying them over it but y'all don't do that they were just doing what they liked who cared if it was terrible People can say my videos suck, but I like making them, so what you gonna do? What you gonna do? But yeah, like I said, I wish this family nothing but the best because it always just sucks whenever you just lose your passion and desire to do something and it has something to do with somebody that you love. Yeah, but like I said, if you guys want to see more of me, follow me on Twitter. I'm funny over there. Follow me on Tumblr. That's where you get to see, like, the inside of my brain. Follow me on Instagram and whatnot. All of that is free. Just a little follow. I want to get the 7K on Instagram before the end of the year, and I'm pretty, pretty sure that we can hit that. Uh, please support me. If you like this video, please go support me on Patreon if you can. Please go donate to the Progenies and watch our pilot link down below. Any support helps. You guys watching this video all the way through help fund the Progenies. Give yourself a pat on the back. I'm proud of you. Thank you. But yes, I said, I love you guys. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. And yes, have a good night.